Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the Lico question pancake sorting. All right, so in this question, we're given an array A with integers and we need to sort it. So the way we're going to sort it is by using something called they call pancake flips. And in one flip, what we need to do are these steps. So we first choose an integer k, and k is equal to or greater than zero or less than the length of our array. And we reverse the subarray. So, so let's say we have a k value of two. We're going to uh, reverse everything, including the zero uh, index, first index, and second index. So for example, over here, a equals three, two, one, four. And what they did is they chose a value of two. So let's uh, look at that index. So in this case, zero, one, and two. So that includes the elements three, two, and one. So what we're going to do, so as you can see over here, three, two, and one, we're going to reverse that. So when you reverse three, two, and one, you get one, two, and three. So reversing that, you get one, two, three, and four. So that's what happens when you flip it at a value of k is equal to two. Okay, so we return an array of the k values of the pancake flips that should be performed in order to sort A. Any valid answer that sorts the array within 10 multiplied by A, um, the length of A, will be uh, correct. Okay, so there are several different combinations and ways that we can do this, but I just want to go through the most intuitive way that I came up with and that probably you're thinking of about about as well okay so for this i'm going to be using the same as uh same values as our example so our example over here is three two four and one okay so that's going to be our input three comma two comma four comma one and we need to sort it so let's see how we can do that and just to show you in our example over here they actually did that in four steps so that's probably the most optimized way ours is not going to be that good but it's still going to uh, give us the correct answer at a pretty good time okay so we have this as our input and now we're going to have our output and this is basically going to be all of our k values. So it's just going to be an empty list and we're just going to keep adding values to it. All right, so let's start off with our input over here and our goal is to sort it. So there's several ways we could sort it, but the most intuitive way that I came up with or, or that I thought of was that each iteration, we're going to move whatever the largest element is to the ending. So in the beginning, what is our largest element? So three, two, four, and one, and well, four is the maximum. And our goal is to move four to the ending. So there's quite a few ways we could do that, but a way which will work all the time is uh, this one. So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna move four to the beginning, and then we're gonna reverse the entire thing. So let's see how that works. So over here, where is four at? Four is at an index of two. So we're going to reverse everything starting from the zeroth index up to and including the uh, second index. So this is at a k value of three. So let's add that to our outputs and let's reverse this. So we're going to end up having four comma two comma three comma one. Okay. And after this, we're going to reverse the entire thing. So that's going to give us a k value of four. And when you reverse the entire thing, we're going to end up with one comma three comma two comma four. So if you notice over here, we know for a fact that the last element is in place. We got the maximum element in its correct place and we're done. So four is in its place and we can kind of just ignore it from now. So I'll kind of just draw like an imaginary line, just saying that four is in its place. So just ignore it from now on. So what we're going to do from now, we're just going to include everything to the left of that imaginary line. So in this case, that's going to include one, three, and two. So the same steps again, we're going to take the largest value, which is three. And then what we want to do is we want to get it to the beginning. So in this case that we're going to end up reversing these two elements, giving us three comma one comma two comma four. Okay. And where did we do the flip? We did the flip at, a value, at the K value of two. So we did that over there. And after we do this, we want to reverse the entire thing. But over here, you want to notice that we're not going to reverse all four of these elements. Instead, we're only going to reverse everything to the left of this imaginary kind of line. So we're just going to reverse three, one, and two. So that's going to give us a, what? Um, two comma one comma three comma four. So after this, we have two elements in its correct place. So right now, the element four is in the correct place and three is also in the correct place. So now we can move our imaginary line. So let's say it's over here. So everything to the right of this is in the correct place. Everything to the left 
might be in the correct place, but we don't know for sure. So let's just continue with this process. And I forgot to add over here, this over here is going to end up having a value of three since we reversed everything from there. So three comma four comma two comma three. Okay, so let's just go through this real quick. So over here we have two comma one comma uh. So over here we have two, one, three, four, but we only want to focus on two and one. So what is the maximum element? Well, it's two. So actually two is already in its correct place. So what's going to end up happening is that we're going to start reversing it or we're going to do the flip at a value of one. So K is going to be equal to one. So when that happens, nothing's actually going to change. So we're going to add the value one and now we're going to flip everything to the left of that imaginary line. So when you flip that, that's at a value of two and we're going to end up getting one comma two comma three comma four. So this is actually completely uh, done. So we're completely done by sorting it, but just to kind of go through the entire process, our image, so now two, three, and four are in place. So for one, we're going to reverse it at a K value of one. So then in that case, it just stays the same one comma two comma three comma four. And after that, we're going to reverse everything to the left of that imaginary list, which again, it's just going to stay the same. So we're going to be ending up with one comma two comma three comma four, but we also need to account for that reversing. So in the ending, we have this and this over here is our answer. So three comma four comma two, three, one, two, one, one. So this is one of the valid answers. There are several different valid answers. If you go back to our example over here, uh, their answer is four comma two comma four comma three, which at the end of the day, we still get the same results. And we're also following the conditions, which is any valid answer that sorts the array within 10 multiplied the length of the array. So we're good in that way. So now let's see how we can actually write this in code. All right, so let's start off with our code. And over here, we're gonna have a, var a variable and I'll just call this X and it's gonna hold the length of our array. And the reason we're actually holding that value is because we're going, so the imaginary line that we were talking about, we're gonna use this X value to kind of implement it. Okay, so after that, we're going to have a list and this is gonna be what we output and I'll just call it the K. Uh, so K, uh, all the K values or K flips that we're going to make. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, iterate through everything, all of the index uh, indices inside of our array. So for index in range length of A, actually instead of calling length of A, we can just call the X variable over here. So I'll just call X over there. Okay, so now we're iterating through everything inside. Okay, so now we're iterating through all of the indices in our array. And what we're gonna do is our first step is to find what the maximum value is. So I'll just call this variable max underscore, and we wanna find the maximum value of our array. But what this does, it's gonna find the maximum value of our entire array, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna just find the maximum value of everything to the left of that imaginary line that we had. So to do that, we're gonna index through everything, and we're gonna stop at the value of our x value minus the index and sorry over here for index in range. Okay, there we go. Okay, so what this is going to do is in our first iteration, we're going to have x minus zero, right? And each time, so that means that the imaginary line is kind of at the ending. And each time the index value increases by one. So at the same time, the x minus index value is going to decrease by one each and every time. So what that means is each time we're setting, so first we have the biggest uh, element in place then the last but one element is in place, and so on and so forth until we reach the very first element. So now we want to find what index this value is at. So I'm just going to call this max index, and to get what index it's at, we can just do a dot index, and what value do we are we looking for is the max value. So this is going to give us where that maximum value is. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a number one because we wanted to make K flips. So to store the value K, so K is actually whatever our index is plus one, right? So we, for K, we start counting at one, two, three, four, but for our index it's zero, one, two, three. So that's why I'm just adding one and it's gonna make our further calculations easy as well. So now we wanna reverse everything until and including our uh, maximum value. So to do that, that's why we added the value one over here. So we can directly just index from everything up to max index. 
So that makes it a lot easier for us. And all we're doing is we're gonna reverse this. So I'm just gonna copy this and now we're just gonna reverse it. That's all we're doing over here. And after we do that, we're also gonna append this to our K list. So k.append and we're gonna append our max index. Okay, so that should be it. And that's the, so that's kind of doing the first part, which is we currently did this part over here. And now we want to do this part over here, which is reversing the entire sub array, right? And to reverse the entire thing, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take A, and we don't want to reverse the entire thing. We just want to reverse everything up to that imaginary line. So to do that, we're going to do uh, iterate through everything until x minus index. So it's the same logic that we're doing using over here, and same thing over here. So we're just going to end up reversing it. So reverse. I'm just going to copy this over here and put this in over here. So now everything is reversed. So in the first iteration, the largest element would be in place by now. Okay, so after this, we also need to add this to our k list. So k.append, and the value we're appending is this value over here. So I'm just going to copy that, x minus index, and paste that over there. And that should be it. So we're going to iterate through each of our values, and at the end, and at the ending of this, we're just going to return our K list. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. And as you can see, our submission did get accepted. And finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Do let me know if you have any feedback or if there's any specific lead code questions you want me to solve. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thank you.